Hello and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to demonstrate how to create this image that's being seen on the screen now from two images and I'm going to teach you how to get an HDR look without actually using an HDR processor. So let's get started. This is uh, one of the images we're going to use. This is the second image that we're going to use. Um, I actually uh, took three brackets, but I'm using the uh, dark bracket, the darkest bracket and the lightest bracket. I'm not using the center uh, exposure, the normal exposure bracket. So what we're going to do is to highlight both. I'm in Lightroom. One of the things I love about Lightroom, as I've said many, many times, is how it interacts uh, so smoothly with Photoshop. And here's an example. We're going to uh, highlight both images, choose both images, and then right click and choose Edit In. And instead of going to Adobe Photoshop, which would be an option, because if we chose this option, we would get two separate image tabs. We're actually going to open as layers, the very last thing in the menu, um, open as layers in Photoshop. What this does for us is actually open up the images together into a single Photoshop image, um, but creates two layers. So as that's working, you'll see uh, Photoshop doing its thing. There's our first image in. Now it's thinking about the second image. There it is. And you'll see it here that it collapses down to two layers. Now, uh, the thing that's kind of cool about this is because it brings it on automatically, it's kind of set them on top of each other. If you're using a tripod, then there's a good chance that these things are going to be lined up. If you were hand-holding, um, you might find that they're not actually quite uh, level or the same. Um, in this case, I was using a tripod, but I will show you a quick trick to, telling, uh, to be able to tell whether or not the images are uh, properly layered. And what you want to do is choose your top layer and choose blend mode and choose difference. So when you do that, you can see here um, how this looks. It's kind of weird. We're not going to leave it in this format. But what you want to look at to uh, are the lines between the light and the dark. And right now, you, it's hard to tell because they are um, layered properly. But I'm going to go ahead and move it so you'll see what it looks like when it isn't. So here is an example of how difference would have resulted had this image not been properly aligned with the one below it. Now the neat thing about that is because you can sort of tell that there's this warping going on between the two, you can choose free transform or control T. It can be found here under uh, the edit menu if you uh, don't know the keystroke, which as I mentioned, control or command T. Once you've done that, you get this bar kind of around it and you're able then to move the um, images until they're in line. Now I like to use the keyboard uh, uh, arrows for this, I just find it a little bit easier. But as you can see, and if I go too far, it goes kind of geeked out the other direction. But as they come together, there's this one moment where sort of all of the lines are smooth and nice and gray and pale. That means they're aligned. So once you get your images aligned, you can hit the check mark at the top or the enter key and that will uh, kind of keep the transformation that you did uh, as set. Now, because we don't want to work with difference, we want to go ahead and change this now back to normal. All right, so here's what we have. Now, the first thing that you'll notice is that in the lighter of the two images, which happens to be my top layer, the uh, trees outside, it's really too light. Um, it's just too much light going on. But yet, in fact, the trees um, and through the windows on the darker image look a little bit better. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and paint in masks uh, to allow the lower image to show up at least as it applies to the brightest parts of this top layer. Now to do that I went ahead and I uh, added a mask and to add a mask go ahead and click the little mask icon here at the bottom and uh, you see it says add vector mask it looks a little bit like a camera. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that we have chosen our brush which is to uh, either hit the B key and you'll choose brush or choose it out of the, t uh, the menu. Once you have that done, you want to make sure that you are painting with black. So you need to make sure your foreground color is black. If it's white, if yours looks like this, go ahead, either hit this double arrow or go ahead and hit the X key and that will switch it as well. The next thing we're going to do is make sure that the opacity of our brush is at 100. And this is done up here at the top um, on the options bar and that our flow is at 100 also. And then we just start painting. So you can see I'm just going to sort of go around the edges. And as I do this, you can see that the trees outside are getting a little bit darker. It's going to take a minute for me to go through all these windows. But you want to get as close as you can to the edges. You do want to sort of be careful not to run over 
too much and I'm kind of going quick and dirty here. Okay, we're going to do these last two windows, make the brush a little bit bigger. Uh, I did that using the right bracket, which is the uh, key right above the enter key. If you use the left bracket, the brush size will actually get smaller. So those are some great keyboard tips. And we'll finish this last window. So now you can see that pretty easily I have have a better result through the windows of the uh, train. The other thing I'm going to do is just tap a little bit here on these really exposed areas. Um, just because those were actually exposed better in the darker image as well. Let's clean this up just a little bit, make that blend. And one here in the back. All right, and actually I'm just gonna improve this right there. Okay, so now that we've done that, you can see our mask. Let's go ahead and click on the mask. You see where we masked. If we wanna be a little bit more precise, we can actually now continue masking if we want. The way to get your mask to show on your screen the way I have done here is to actually hold down the Alt or Option key and then click directly on the mask thumbnail. It's also how you get it back to where it was and so you're seeing your image again. Now I think we're pretty much ready. I now would consider this actually a single image but because it's not working on a single image the best thing to do here is either flatten your layers or you can choose both. So you see here that the top one is highlighted, the bottom one is now highlighted. And if you hold down the Option or Alt key, right click and choose Merge Visible, you'll see that the two images have now merged to a single layer at the top. So now it's as if we just brought in a single image. So we are ready to go. Next thing I always say, go ahead and duplicate your layer. To duplicate this layer, go ahead and hit Control or Command J. Another way to get to a duplicate layer is under the Layers menu, and you can just choose Duplicate Layer. I do that because that way when I start making adjustments, if I find I've done something that I don't like, I can easily delete the layer, but I don't actually have to go all the way back to the beginning. So next we're going to choose Camera Raw. So I'm going to show you a quick trick on how to kind of make this feel like HDR without actually using an HDR processing technique. What we're going to do is first go ahead and drag our highlights all the way down. And we're going to drag our shadows all the way up. Next step is we're going to actually make sure that we have some whites and blacks in the image. To do this, we're going to go ahead and choose the Alt Option key again. And then we're going to drag the whites to the right. And you can see right now that the screen is black. And what we're looking for are those first specks of color showing us that we're getting whites back into the image. There we are. You see them kind of showing up there. Now we're going to do the same thing, only go to the left with the black slider. So we're going to hold down the Alt and Option key again. This time you see we have a white, and you can see almost right away we have blacks in the image. So this actually, it takes no, we don't really have to do anything with this slider at all. Um, so we'll go back to zero. Oops, go ahead and type it in. There we go. All right, now we can go ahead and crisp this up a bit with some clarity, add in some contrast, and we are going to go ahead and hit OK. Alright, so that's just our first step. But I want this to look really grungy. So the easiest way to do that, I could have continued with the clarity slider um, on the layer or in the camera raw where we just were, but I'd like to sometimes come out, see it, make some reflections, decide if this is really what I want or if I want to go further. In this case, I actually think I want to go a little bit further. So we're going to come back in to camera raw and we are going to do this again. Now this time you'll see that no, there's no previous selections here. So this is a brand new filter, which is one of the things I really like about it, is I can go back and forth from Camera Raw as often as I like. In this case, I'm really gonna drag my clarity slider up and maybe add just a little bit more brightness and go ahead and 
add some vibrance. Now what you will see as I go through this process is that I've actually started to bl uh, have some highlights that are showing here in red, meaning that they're blown highlights. We can fix that pretty easily within Camera Raw. So we're going to go ahead now and we're going to choose the adjustment brush. And if you can see up here in the top left corner, I can either hit the K key or I can click on this little icon here. Now what happens is we go from detail to adjustment brush panel. And in this case, what we want to do is go ahead and click the highlights down and we're going to go negative 25. If you just click on it, everything else will go to zero um, and this will kind of pop into 25 and then I can actually adjust it from here if I see fit. But we're going to start with 25 and see where we get to. Now this is like any other brush. If you use the left or right bracket key, you can see that it gets uh, bigger. Here I'll go up to the top where you can see it on the ceiling or smaller. Now you can see that there is a dashed line and a solid line. The dashed line is the outer edge of the brush. The solid line is actually telling you where your feathering is going to start. So if you want to change your feathering, you can actually do that also with the key, uh, on, with the keystrokes. You can hold down the shift key and then use the left bracket key to go bigger and the right bracket key to go smaller. When the inner circle is getting smaller, that means that you have more feathering. The other way to change feathering or brush size is over on the right hand side on the panel where it says size, feather, flow, and density. So those are some options. Um, I just find the keyboard uh, strokes to be so much easier. In this case, I'm going to look for all of the little red uh, lines and dashes because those are my blown highlights and I'm going to just mask where I have those. So. You don't have to get rid of all of them, particularly in an HDR image, because that's kind of what HDR is all about. But we'll go ahead and clean up a little bit these. Okay, so now I think I've gotten to where I want to be with that. So another thing that's actually very common in HDR images um, is a glow. Now you can use software to create glow. Nick has um, a glow feature in its Color Effects Pro, but I'm going to show you how to do this uh, using Photoshop layers um, just because it's easy and then you don't have to buy any extra software if, in, in, unless you actually already own that stuff. But if you don't, this is a great way to kind of achieve the same result without that additional purchase. So the first thing we're going to do is again create a layer copy. So we're going to do Control J again, and this one we're going to change we're going to call this screen and we are going to change the blend mode to screen. All right, now it's super bright. You saw that, right? That it changed it, made it very bright. That's not a problem. Now we're going to duplicate the screen layer. So control J again. This one we're going to call glow. And we're going to change the blend mode to multiply. All right, now it's really dark. The next thing we want to do on the glow layer is actually create some blur. To do that, we're going to go to filter, choose blur, Gaussian blur, and we're going to go ahead and set our pixels to 16.2. It could be 16, it could be 16.5. This is just kind of where I've gotten used to doing it. Now you'll see that we have that sort of traditional HDR glow, but it's a little bit, um, kind of too dark and too much. So what we want to do is now make some adjustments to our opacity. So starting with the glow, when we bring that down to about mm, 40. All right. Now it's too light because the screen layer is actually at 100%. So we want to choose the screen layer and change its opacity to about 35. All right. There you go. Now, if you think that that's still a bit too bright, you can go ahead and bring the screen layer back or bring the glow layer up. So now you can sort of make this as customized as you want for your taste in uh, HDR or your taste in your imagery, and it makes it super simple. One of the last things that I like to do is actually check my levels and see where I am along the histogram. In this case, I think I'm gonna bring my brights up a little bit by dragging the right hand arrow, which is your highlights, to the left, and I'm going to bring my midtones down a little bit by driving the center arrow, dragging it a little bit to the right. And then I'd say I'm pretty much done. So this is a quick remembrance of what we've done. This is our first image layer, our darker image. We blended it with our lighter image to create uh, our base layer. As you can see, that doesn't really change, but that's because I made it a single layer. From there, we went into Camera Raw, gave it some crunch and grunge, 
And from there, we went into screen, lightened it up, added some glow, and then just darkened our levels. And that's it. Super simple. You can see out the windows. You can tell that it is bright out, but it isn't as bright as it was. There's actually detail in the, in the imagery outside of the windows. And the inside looks all kind of grungy and ethereal. One last thing that I would do, because it feels like this isn't exactly level, and in fact, uh, it sort of is, it's just not centered. We'll choose the grid, and we're going to go ahead and get this so that our center line goes right down the middle of the aisleway here. So that's about right. And that's it. That's our image. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, learned some new tricks in Photoshop. Take care. Thanks for watching.